Some Hearthstone classes are just easier to play than others. It's written in the constitution. Now does that mean if you play one of the easier classes, you're just playing Hearthstone on easy mode? Not exactly, you can still be bad and play an easy class. Certain classes feel more like a point and click adventure, while other classes you have to tickle your brain a bit to make your move. So let's rank every Hearthstone class to see which ones are easy to play and which ones require some more brain power. Rexa! Hunters were built to do one thing and one thing only. Face damage. You see a bunch of minions on the board? Face damage. There's a good value trade. Face damage. You're gonna lose if you don't clear the board. Freaking clear the board, dude. What's wrong with you? Come on. Hunter cards are famous for not having taunt or big removal. So in other words, if you play hunter, you are physically incapable of stopping opposing players besides with your minions. So if you can't stop them, what else could you do besides face damage? Almost every other hero power in the game requires you to actually move the cursor before you use it. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh on the poor hunters. After all, you do have to play around opponent's board removal so you don't lose on the spot. But that's like saying you have to stop pouring milk before it overflows. Just because you can do it doesn't mean it's impressive. It's a great class for beginners because of how easy it is to play, but it starts falling off the more complicated the game gets. Gina! But I can't say the same for Mage though. Mage gets the honor of being the tutorial class, the class that everyone plays first. It also gets the honor of having the only nerfed hero portrait, even though Druid has the exact same problem. This doesn't even belong in a PG card game. I don't want to see Halo Mark anywhere near me. This Playing Mage is supposed to be a delicate balance of using your spells for removal and to support your minions, or using your spells to go face and burn your opponents. There's a slight problem with this as of now, as your spells can just discover other spells, which discover more spells, which can deal damage and some minions at the same time and discover you spells, but, oh wait, no, 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 there's more, there's more. Your spells can't discover you a partner. The weakness of Mage is that their minions aren't strong stat-wise, but with the current state of the game, stats don't really matter in the first place anyways. It's more about the effects of the cards when you have a minion in your deck. You see, Mages are the Toyota Corollas of Hearthstone classes. They can do a lot of things well, it's reliable, but it's not the best at it. Oh, wait, 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 I figured it out. They're the best at both! Does this Mage secret negate your next minion or your next spell? It doesn't matter, because whatever you guess is the opposite. The best part? It didn't even start in their deck. When a class can generate a seemingly endless amount of cards that answers anything you put out, then is that class really hard to play? Ah, Death Knight. Like every other new class, the Death Knight got the too broken at launch treatment. Seriously, if your class identity is that you have three playstyles in your runes, why are all three of them busted at launch? Death Knight is the first class in our list with its own mechanic. Guilt. How many of your own minions have you mercilessly killed for your own profit? Well, there's a tally on the bottom of your screen, so you're constantly reminded of how bad of a person you are. Death Knights are simple. You choose the rune that makes you unkillable, makes you unlikable, or the one that's just kind of useless. Don't worry about that one. Honestly, the hardest part of this class is constructing your own deck. You choose what runes you want, and then you're confined by the consequences of your own choices. But other than that, Death Knights are just constantly good at what they do. What more can I say? Paladins used to be very famously known for not having any hard removals. You can't directly remove a minion with your spell, and you'd have to force your minions to do everything for you. They were the ultimate midrange class, not being able to be too aggressive, but not being able to last against the control decks as well. The trade-off is that playing against a paladin feels like you're being hit with multiple layers of taxes. Spell, 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 bam, I'm dead! The counterplay for this class is dire. Just like Hunter, you have to play around board clears, but unlike Hunter, whose hero power lets them deal direct damage to the face, Paladins without weapons can't really do damage to the face very well. The trade-off is that when you play a Paladin and you stick a minion on the board, it gets way more value. So, them having their minions cleared from the board is such a worse consequence compared to the Hunters. But if you know how to play around board clears well, then playing Paladin has become so easy as of late. There are so many cards that just give you more minions on the board and refill your hand. So am I basically saying Paladins are really easy to play because their cards have been broken for the last three years? Yeah. Enjoy your upper class privilege. Okay, the first four classes I don't consider hard to play at all. Honestly, switch them around for all I care. I hate Death Knights anyways. But Shaman. Shaman's where you get things a little spicy, bringing up the heat by adding pepper. Hero powers aren't supposed to be busted or anything like that, but Shaman's hero power? Absolute garbage, trash, ew, yicky, yucky, bleh. Your hero power is literally a 1 in 4 chance of getting a totem that you want, or in other words, a 0% chance. The shaman specific overload mechanic isn't what makes the class hard to play either. All you're doing is playing an overpowered card on a turn earlier than it should have been played. What makes shamans so difficult to me, and objectively, is how clunky their cards synergize with each other. You've got a base of totems, elementals, and a bunch of spell schools. Overload decks, evolve decks, and if you're feeling something really lucky, 
maybe tokens. Do you know what all these have in common? They suck when they're not the entire identity of your deck. This in itself is not a bad thing. A lot of classes are like this, but what makes this class so difficult to play is that their core cards really suck in flexibility. In other words, if you're playing one type of shaman deck, all of the other shaman cards will suck for you. And if you don't get exceptional shaman support for one archetype, you are basically playing handicapped. I swear, even if you get a slightly mediocre opening, you are just hero powering and waiting a lot of the time. And since the hero power sucks so much, okay, you know what? Maybe I just don't like shamans, eh? Oh, speaking of classes I actually despise. Listen, druids are my absolute least favorite class to play against. But if we're talking about all time hardest classes to play, druid has to be up there. Druids actually used to be a very combo heavy class with using stuff like the old Malakos for one turn kills. There's also miracle druids in that mix, which used another big combo to perform one turn kills as well. I am of the opinion, and may I add factually right opinion, that miracle decks are the hardest types of decks to play in Hearthstone. And in the early Hearthstone competitive scene, miracle druids were the class to play. Druids do not have any board clear. These don't count. Druids just can't deal with their opponent's board without using their minions or hero power. They are usually reliant on their bigger minions just to bully their opponent's board to win. That is a delicate balance, knowing when to play minion or when you can ramp up for a long turn advantage. But then the game decided to give these bigger minions a rush, which is no big deal, the game just got faster and a few rush minions won't hurt. Then they released Wild and Guff, and that's where I think Druid became a significantly easier class to play. But that's a topic for another day. Am I being a little biased with how much I hate Druids? Yeah, I'll admit that, and I don't care. Warlock's identity used to be a delicate balance of taking damage for an advantage. That rhymes! I didn't even mean to rhyme that in the script, oh my! In a lot of zoo-like warlock decks in the past, you were at risk of just losing by dealing too much damage to your own face. Warlocks also had such a cool style of control decks. Most warlocks can't win by just outlasting your opponents, so they rely on really late mid-range style decks that use some sort of combos or big minions to win. Now that is a hard act to balance, knowing how to survive against faster decks, especially when that hero power deals damage to yourself, but also not holding in your combo too late so control decks can stop it. This type of gameplay makes it so warlocks really need to know their decks, matchups, or just general meta well. Without this knowledge, you can just find yourself life tapping yourself to death. When I think about the classic control deck in Hearthstone, I think Warrior. If you feel like murdering someone, this is the class to pick because this class is hands down the best at removal. Close second to Priest though. The only problem is that when you're playing Warrior, you're also part of the lower class. You only have a limited amount of resources as Warrior, and though it seems like you gain millions of armor with them, you will run out eventually. Especially if it's early in the game, you really need to know how to use your board clear or else you might just get run over. A lot of the time, these control decks rely on a few good cards to win, so you better know how to play your win conditions right and the perfect time to play them. For the warrior aggro decks, yeah, okay, they are way easier to play than their control decks, I can't come up with a defense for that one. But you gotta remember, the aggro decks in warrior use the warrior hero power, which completely suck in aggro archetypes. But still, a lot of warrior decks require a lot of tighter plays, or you might find yourself snowballing into your loss, trying to rely on gaining two armor a turn just to survive. The Priest class is just historically so bad that they're just one of the hardest classes to play. Oh, brother. Okay, but they also have some difficult parts in their class themselves. First, just like Warrior, their hero power. Their hero power is flexible, sure, but it's also the most useless hero power in the game most of the time. Either nothing needs to be healed, or that 2 health does not make any difference at all. When you're playing with this hero power most of the time, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage. That's why they reverse Michael Jackson to get a better one. But when you add how the class plays, it gets worse. Free stacks are super slow. Historically, the win conditions for Priest have been awful, and when they're good, they are busted. But in the majority of scenarios, you are just hoping you outlast the aggro decks with whatever mediocre cards you have for your expansion. That's okay though, walling out aggro decks is the best things priests can do. That's the only time your hero power is good. It's when you're going against another control matchup that it is really difficult to win as priest. When you are against a control deck, gaining 2 health literally does not matter because you're going to be at full health most of the time anyway. Since priest spells are also focused on removing minions, what do you do? 
There's no minions. Have you ever played a 20 minute game against the priest? Did you feel how brain numbing that game was? Priest players do that every game. Imagine playing 20 minute games and then losing every time. That makes the class hard to play for me. Why would you want to play a class that does that to you? So not only do their cards suck most of the time, it is hard to just get up and want to play priests in the first place. If you told me that you can make a glass cannon feeling archetype in a card game, I would call you crazy. This is a domestic violence of a relationship. Your opponent always deals damage to you and you deal it right back and you suck the life out of them. Demon hunters can't deal with big minions. The removal for that is atrocious. They're a class that usually uses a lot of small minions and smaller damage dealing spells to deal damage. Whenever they put something on the board, it is not staying there for long. That's where most of the challenge comes from. Sure, you got a lot of small minions, but most of the time they just get removed right away. It's knowing how to whittle down your opponent's resources while also trying to navigate your lack of removal or big minions to deal with your opponent's board. A lot of demon hunter decks are just hard to play too. They have a lot of combo like decks where you have to pace yourself before your opponent makes you explode. But that's also what makes their class so good. You can't just click on a minion to remove it. It's a lot more of, here's some spells, maybe some minions, figure it out. But this also means you can be flexible and creative with how you deal with the board, making it a way higher skill ceiling than most other classes. Rogue is the only class in Hearthstone that I'm actually concerned that I'll run out of time with on a turn. Let's think about the weaknesses of Rogue. They cannot heal, can't play top minions, cannot remove big boards easily, and they probably experience discrimination. Basically, if your opponent is playing the game like they should, rogues have difficulty stopping it. But that's the beauty of rogue, knowing when to pull off your combo or when to leave your opponent's minion on the board so you can do your moves. Their miracle decks require so much thinking in such a short span of a turn, but also reap so many benefits when they're done properly. Their aggro decks are often very tricky as their direct face damage usually comes from their hero attacking or something of the sort. And even in these somewhat simple aggro decks, you got some combos to do with your shadow tips and some creative applications there. And at the same time as all of these combo, miracle, and aggro decks, you are always vulnerable when playing rogues, and that's what makes them so difficult to play. But do you know what the hardest class to play against is? The ones with the most busted cards in the expansion. Seriously, there are just some cards that your opponent can just plop on the board and instantly win with no skill at all. And I've counted the most annoying cards you can play against in this video right here. See if what you just thought of came up on my list. Subscribe for more Hearthstone videos, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.